Well, I'm just demonstrating how I set up a Windows 95 emulator to um, to run my payphone programming software. And what I did is I used a program called Oracle VM VirtualBox, and I set up a Windows 95 virtual environment. And I had an old, actually I had an old CD, uh, Windows 95 installation CD that I had to use because it didn't come with uh, didn't come with the operating system. So I had a few patches I had to put in place, and it's doing that goofy Windows 95 enter network password thing. I forgot how to get rid of that. But Anyway, we'll get rid of it. And that is a sound I haven't heard for quite a while. So the goal is to program this um, Ernest Telcom CoCut, which I have, and I have all the programming manuals for it. I've got the, uh, the up, two upper housing keys, two coin box keys, and I've got um, the T key that came with it. And uh, it did not come with it, but a really great option is this uh, 16 by two line LCD display, and it uses the standard parallel port uh, interface, four bit. Uh, there's actually a four and eight bit mode on it. You can see the pins on the bottom there. Uh, but I uh, wired in a cable, sorry, on the top there. I wired in a cable that uh, connects to a um, LCD connector here. And what Ernest did, <laughs> and this is kind of a pattern in a lot of their code, They've wired up things backwards, and uh, sometimes their code has numbers that are backwards. So it seemed to be the preferable mode of one of their des or their design engineers to uh, basically security through obscurity. But anyway, uh, I basically had to put this ribbon cable in backwards to get the pins on the top to flip left to right, and then it all worked fine. So um, you can see when I pick it up, it just kind of gives me normal prompts. Um, so I can dial like project MF. And it prompts and does all that. But you can also flip a switch here that um, puts it into programming mode. So when I go off hook, I get into program mode and I can do things like um, I know the number from the manual of the programming option. I can display the, this is the inbound and outbound rings and then the polling window, which eliminates the inbound ring delay during the uh, polling window time to minimize the uh, call center's uh, uh, dwell time on each individual phone. So that's handy and that's how I normally program it, but I got the desire to be able to use the programming software again. Unfortunately, it's a 16-bit program which will not run on, um, on Windows 10 64-bit or any 64-bit operating system. Uh, Microsoft uh, dropped support for 16-bit programs on their 64-bit OSs because, um, not because they had to, but well, not because they wanted to, but rather it's a technical restriction which I won't get into on, on how this all works. So anyway, I did get Windows 95 up and um, using a, uh, <laughs> a there's no way to really communicate between the virtual machine and Windows 10. So what I had to do is for any file I needed to transfer to the Windows 95 VM, I needed to um, burn the file onto a CD ISO image, which I could then mount as a virtual uh, CD drive here through the control panel on the um, on the Oracle thing. And then I was able to read it. So I was able to get files into the system. Getting them out, I have to use a virtual floppy drive, which is very limiting. But anyway, uh, I guess I could do it with networking, but I wasn't able to get it to work because of some Samba incompatibilities between the old Windows 95 and the more secure version on Windows 10. So. Anyway, all sorts of issues. But anyway, bottom line is I got it working. So um, very strange to be working in Windows 95 after all this time. But I can start up the program, which is called Telelink. Um, and it communicates via the virtual serial port in the VM with the physical serial port 
um, on the Windows 10 machine, which is actually a USB to RS-232 adapter plugged into the back of the computer. And that talks to this um, modem here. And believe it or not, it actually works. It will actually communicate uh, as though it's a local serial port on, a window, on Windows 95 hardware, which is pretty amazing. So Telelink is the... Um, is the uh, the Ernest Telecom software. And here's the setup, and you can see for different phone models, I have the D3, that's the payphone model. They've got some initialis initialization strings here that I needed to significantly modify. I could not get this thing to dial out or even recognize the modem initially. Initially, this uh, expected to see a 1200 baud Hayes smart modem, and I needed to set these up to emulate pretty much the behavior of a Hayes modem. And that meant changing the response strings, the way uh, the DTR signal worked, a whole bunch of other oddball things, how the speakers were turned on. Hayes used a uh, F command and Multitech, the, who make the modem I'm using, use an M command instead. So all this uh, took a lot of figuring out, but it does work amazingly. So. Um, what really helped is I had a monitor program that the maker of the USB to serial port adapter made that allowed me in Windows 10 to watch the conversation between this software and the payphone and could actually see what was transpiring between them. So that was kind of cool. So the way this works is you go to this direct mode and these are the various things you can upload and download into the phone. So AOS scripts are some operator, uh, third-party operator scripts that tell the phone how to call third-party operator services for, uh, you know, more money, basically. Uh, collection status tells you how much money is in the coin boxes and so forth. Uh, CSN table is the rate table, uh, which is a binary. I can upload it and download it, but I can't read it. It's uh, unreadable and it doesn't really have an interpreter. The programmable features allow you to upload basically the entire feature set of the phone. This is probably the, the most usable one. Uh, here's rate table. Actually, I got that confused with CSN. I forget what this is, but I think it's a scripting language that allows you to override the rate table for specific telephone numbers and area codes and exchanges. SMDR is just the um, call log information on outgoing calls from the phone. Uh, there's 10 speed dials that you can configure. You can do time and date. There's a scrolling message display, but my model of phone, even with that LCD display, does not support it. And I've got a phone call here. Okay, we are back from my phone call. Sorry about that. So what we're going to do is initiate a call to the um, modem and retrieve all of the programmable... Well, I tell you what, let's do the... Uh, Let's do the collection status. That'll tell us what's in the coin box. So you can see all the fields are blank, but here's the phone number, the uh, ID number of the phone, a six digit number, uh, date, uh, what's in the coin box, how much uh, the phone over the life of the phone is collected, uh, how much was collected for operator assisted calls. It breaks it down into various categories here, kind of useful. So. This allows retrieving that remotely from the phone. Otherwise, you'd have to open the upper housing and punch all these things in manually, which you could do, but it's not very convenient. So uh, what we do is we go up to the transfer menu and we select upload. That brings up a window that allows us to enter the telephone number of the phone. So I have this connected uh, via SIP over ULAW, which is uncompressed 8-bit um, PCM audio in both directions. Works quite well at 1200 baud. I've had no problems at all. So I'm going to put in a dummy number I have set up that routes from the modem to the um, to the payphone. So one and we'll use a 630 area code, 555 exchange and 1616. And the ID number of this phone is 123 four, five, six, and that's all we need. Uh, the type is it's a D3 slash ETX circuit board in the phone, so that I have the D3, and we'll hit OK. So uh, right now, 
I have the speaker muted for this portion of it, but it should pick up and dial. There it goes. And in a moment, we should see carrier detect. You hear the payphone ringing. It's set to answer on the fifth ring to give me time to answer it in case I want to use it as an incoming line. And there is a timeout here, which I extended to account for the extra ring time. So it's got a 210 seconds left to make the connection at this point. There it goes. Uh, the speaker muted, but it's now setting up the handshake. And we should see the carrier detect light go on and the received data. And the TV light just blinked, which sent the ID number of the phone. And currently it's now populating the, uh, the blank fields. And there you see it pulled in the data. So currently we've got 90 cents in the coin box. And since I've reset it, we've got uh, a total of $4.60 that have come in total. And then it gives a breakdown um, kind of accumulated breakdown of local calls and so forth over over time. I haven't bothered to reset those, so some of the amounts are pretty uh, pretty high there. So, so there you go. I can uh, I can then clear it, clear the uh, clear the table, which I'm not going to do, or I can just do an exit on this with quick exit, and I can since I'm connected, I can for example upload all of the the features. So let's do that. And this, uh, there's a fair amount of data here to move. Um, but after a few seconds, it should populate all of these various options. And the nice thing about the software is it knows the options that are supported. So here you can see uh, a few of the options, the ID number of the phone, which I mentioned, um, and other numbers that are called for directory assistance. Here I redirect 555-1212 to 411, for example. And I have callback uh, methods disabled basically here. And there's several pages of this. So you can see all the various rate overrides, the coin box totals, um, various other bits. So that's it. And uh, when this is happening, of course, the phone itself Receiver is completely dead, although you can hear very faintly in the background through some kind of crosstalk, a, um, some of the modem tones. The, um, it's interesting, the LCD display says temporarily out of order. So it's clear, and there it just hung up from inactivity. It has a fairly short timeout. But it's interesting it puts that up there because it, apparently it's meant to be on the outside of the phone when not in programming mode. So my phone doesn't do that, but... Um, Apparently that LCD was used for an external display. In fact, I've got some vacuum fluorescent displays that are in the same format of that that would give a nice illuminated display. So I've toyed with the idea of putting a box on the outside that would be kind of interesting. But anyway, future project. Uh, so we've actually hung up this point. However, I can save all this data to a, a CSV file, a comma delimited file. I can save it as uh, just a normal file that can be retrieved and then printed off. Like I say, if I want to get any of this retrieved data back to Windows 10 in the normal desktop environment, I would need to put it into a virtual floppy drive and then mount that floppy drive on Windows 10 and read the, uh, read the data off of it. Clumsy, and, but if the files aren't too big, it, it works fairly good. So that's, uh, that's it. Success at getting this ancient 16-bit Windows, probably Windows 3.2 era program working on uh, or under Windows 10 uh, on a emulated version of, of Win95. Thanks for watching.